Hi, I'm Andrew with NVIDIA and you're watching GeForce Garage. Our Red Harbinger cross desk is finally built and ready to get fired up. Of course, it looks great, it runs killer, and has some of the best components on the market. But we can get more out of this machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in my good friend Travis Jank from Next Gen Computers, Dr. Overclock himself, to squeeze every little last bit of performance we can out of this awesome computer. Hi, I'm Travis V2 Jank. Before we get started, there's a few things you should know about overclocking. Overclocking is the act of pushing the component speed beyond the manufacturer's rated specifications. Therefore, you're getting extra performance in your computer and better performance in gaming. With that increase in performance, there's also a slight increase in risk. Some of those risks include system instability, crashes, lockups, total system failure, meltdown of your processor, your video card. At the very least, you're gonna void your warranty. But don't worry, today we're gonna to show you a safe and easy way to overclock your system. You can overclock just about anything, but the cross desk we have has the right components perfectly selected that give you the headroom and the features that make it convenient and easy to get the most performance out of your system. For example, we have an Intel Core i7-4960X Extreme Edition processor. It has a high core count, it has a high clock speed, most importantly, it has an unlocked multiplier, meaning we can push this thing through the moon. Next, we have our Corsair Dominator Platinum. It's quad channel memory kit, 2133 megahertz, and it's low latency. This gives us lots of memory bandwidth here, perfect for overclocking. Driving this system, we have the Asus Republic of Gamers, Rampage 4 Black Edition. This is an amazing motherboard with lots of performance and potential. It's a 2011 CPU socket, quad channel memory. It's fully loaded with features including four-way SLI capability, four PCI Express 16 slots on there. Now, this motherboard has what it takes in the BIOS. It's really got all the features that makes it easy to use and it's gonna help us get the most potential out of our components. Overclocking generates a lot more heat. Luckily, we have this premium EK water cooling setup here that was filled up in the last episode. It cools the processor and all four video cards. It's gonna get that extra heat out of there. Craziest part about this system is the GeForce GTX Titan Blacks. One out of the box is great for gaming. Four is just ludicrous. First off, they've got a high CUDA core count. They've got a high clock speed. They're gonna be driving frame rates like you've never seen before. With these cards, we can really overclock them and we're gonna get the best performance possible. Aside from the hardware, there are three software programs we need. For stability testing and benchmarking, we'll be using 3DMark for the GPU and XTU for the CPU. 3DMark is a standard in benchmarking and stability testing, checking the system for errors, ensuring that it's not going to fail when you're playing games and you need it most. XTU is Intel's extreme tuning utility. It is very important for testing the performance and stability of your processor. There are several applications to use when overclocking your CPU and motherboard. However, I prefer to use the BIOS. The BIOS is a simple and easy way to get into your computer and change the performance settings. And finally, our overclocking application is ASUS GPU Tweak. This allows us to modify the video card's performance parameters. We can increase the core, memory frequency, and voltage for the video card, ensuring that we get the highest possible performance from our GeForce GTX Titan Blacks. So the first thing we need is a good baseline. We need to know where the system performance is, how it compares in its current state at factory settings, so that when we increase our clock speeds and we make adjustments for performance, we need to know that we're actually gaining performance and we're improving the system. We're gonna go ahead and open up 3D Mark. We're gonna uncheck Include Demo and run the benchmark. So if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see we have frames per second, total frame count throughout the benchmark, and the time running during this test. You wanna pay attention to the frame rate, because that's where our performance matters. When you're playing a video game, you want that magical 60 frames per second. We don't really wanna go below that. We were running about 150 frames per second there. You'll see as load increases, and there's more work for the system, that frame rate will drop. One advantage of multiple GPUs is being able to offload the PhysX to one of your additional cards. For example, we're using the fourth video card in our configuration to process all PhysX calculations. This is removing that additional workload from the CPU and is putting it on a GPU that has available resources. All right, so we just got our first score in here and we're running about 21,000. 
And uh, that shows us with this system here, our cross desk is about 99% better than the rest of the systems compared. Let's go ahead and get started with the video cards. We're gonna use Asus GPU Tweak. Here we can change the GPU boost speed. We can also change the voltage and the memory speed of the graphics card as well. We're gonna start out about 980 megahertz stock and the memory clock is 7,000 megahertz at factory stock. We're gonna take GPU boost up about 1% every time. It's the first step, 1% increment in clock speed and every step after that, we're gonna go up an additional 1% from the stock speed. We're also gonna to need to increase that GPU voltage in order to keep the processor stable. We're gonna go up about 1% with the GPU voltage. We're also gonna to need to apply a maximum GPU voltage as well. Again, we're gonna do 1%. So we're gonna go ahead and click apply and we'll start the bench. Launch 3D Mark, uncheck include demo, and run. After a successful bench, it's kind of rinse and repeat from here. We're now 21,316 points in 3D Mark. We've maxed out the maximum GPU voltage option, but we'll continue to increase the minimum GPU voltage, apply higher clock speeds, and bench. Let's keep pushing this until it quits. Now that we've maxed out the minimum GPU voltage, we'll continue to increase our core frequency and run the benchmark. All right, with the video card clocked in at 1150 megahertz on the core, we're at 21,855. A bit of an increase from our previous overclock overall performance. We're still doing really well here. I think the next step, we're gonna go back to GPU tweak. If you look here, we are approaching about 200 frames per second. Definitely getting up there. It's a lot higher than the 60 frames per second everybody desires when we're gaming. And there we have it. We have a screen lock. We pushed the video card a little bit too far. We've already fed it the most amount of voltage that we can get. At this point, we're gonna have to recover the system and we're gonna have to back off the clock speeds. So we just broke 22,000. We've got the video card running 200 megahertz above its stock speed. It's at 1180 megahertz on the core clock. Let's go ahead and move to overclocking the CPU and give these video cards all they've got. To enter your BIOS, restart your computer. When the BIOS splash screen comes up, press delete. Now that we're in the BIOS, you can see we have a CPU turbo mode speed. This is our target speed. And we have a target DRAM speed, so that's our memory speed. First place we're gonna go is the CPU core ratio. We're gonna change this from auto to sync all cores. The reason why we choose sync all cores is we want every single processor core running at the same speed. We want all six cores going full throttle. The stock speed of this processor is 3.6 gigahertz. So we're gonna go one notch up or one ratio, and that's gonna go 37. And you'll now see up here at the top, it says that all core target CPU speed is 3.7 gigahertz or 3700 megahertz. We're also going to want to adjust our DRAM frequency. The memory that we have in this system right now is 2133 megahertz at the factory, so we'll go ahead and set that in. Our CPU core voltage at stock is about 1.1 to 1.15 volts. We want to go up a little bit on that, so we're going to try and go up one notch and we're going to give it 1.2 volts because we are going up with the speed. We're going to need to give it more voltage to keep it stable. Go ahead and press F10 to save and exit. So now that we've successfully applied overclock settings in the BIOS and booted back to the operating system, we're going to use Intel's XTU utility to test the stability and performance of the system. Make sure you select Benchmarking tab and click Run. So now that we've finished the benchmark, we see we have 1127 marks, a little bit above what our stock baseline was. So what we're going to do is go ahead back to the BIOS, increase the ratio by one, reboot, rerun the test. 
And just like the GPU previously, we're going to keep stepping up the speed until we hit a point of failure, at which we will back it down to something more stable and rerun the test to ensure that the performance is there as well as the stability in the computer. Here we are at 4.2 GHz. Intel XTU will go ahead and stress the system. Right now our processor temperature is a little bit above uh, 57, 58 degrees Celsius right now. And you'll see that under full active core load, that processor's temperature will continue to rise. We do have a nice premium liquid cooling system in here to remove that excess heat, and that's gonna allow us to drive the processor's frequency higher, and eventually we'll start giving it some more voltage as well. All right, we just got our numbers in, 1,249 marks. We're definitely above what our baseline was. We're really improving the performance here. I don't think she's given it all she's got. We're gonna go back into the BIOS, kick it up a little bit more, and see how far we can take it. It was 50, it might not even boot like this, but let's try it anyways. Boom! All right, so 0x0124, blue screen stop code. We definitely pushed the processor too far on this one. Looks like we need more voltage to the CPU. So we're gonna look at what the current voltage is. We're gonna look at what it was when it was last stable through the benchmark, and we're gonna increase that voltage beyond what it's automatically applying through the BIOS. We're at a 50 core ratio, which means five gigahertz. We take a look at the voltage, we're at 1.568 volts. So let's go ahead and apply a manual voltage of 1.6 volt. It indicates red as a color, meaning that if you do not have adequate cooling system on this processor, you have the potential to overheat it, cause damage, shorten the lifespan of the CPU. But in this case, we've got some really nice liquid cooling and our temperatures are well within specification. I wouldn't recommend going anywhere above 85 degrees Celsius for long-term use that can cause damage to the CPU, especially if you're running higher overclocks. We'll definitely wanna watch that in the next benchmark and make sure that we don't do any thermal throttling. We're gonna lose performance on that and we don't overheat it. We're gonna avoid that damage. We were up at five gigahertz, but we could not keep it stable. Our temperatures were getting up there. We were approaching thermal throttling. We were getting blue screens. Just to keep the system stable and for sake of reliability, we had to dial it back down to 4.7. That was the last stable point at which we were benchmarking. And we'll go ahead and see what the performance number is here and compare it to what it was from our stock. We're running upwards about 85 degrees Celsius. We don't have any thermal throttling occurring right now. We've got six active cores. This is perfect. We're maxing out that CPU and really stressing it hard right now. We just finished the test here, just shy of 1,400 marks. We started out a little bit around 1,000 marks, so we've got a good gain in performance from the CPU. We're running about one gigahertz above its stock speed. We maxed out at 85 degrees Celsius, so that's right within the parameters that we want to be within those safety margins. So let's move on to the next step. Go ahead and launch ASUS GPU Tweak one more time. You can go ahead and overclock the graphics card back to our 1,180 megahertz and launch 3D Mark. All right, with the extra horsepower pumping those video cards, we're really driving them now. Going over 200 frames per second on the first test, we just about hit 230 there, and uh, that's a lot better than when we started out. And here we are in test two, now going over 200 frames per second. All right, test three, we're about 60 frames per second there. A little bit more tweaking with this processor and video cards can definitely get some more performance out of it. Keep moving those steps, maybe smaller increments, testing, benching, adjusting, and you can squeeze every last drop out of the system. All right, here we are in the last test, the combined test. We got both the processor and the graphics cards working together. We started out, it was somewhere around below 30 frames per second. 
We were topping out here just now about 50, approaching 60 frames per second. That's really what we wanted to get. Now, we keep pushing this system, eventually we'll achieve that, but we might just hit the limit of the cooling here. Final results are in, 25,862 points. We are a lot higher than when we started out. That is exactly what we're looking for. We've got the performance and we've got the stability. Now we can take this video card, we can take this processor, we can push it farther and risk some stability, but I'm happy with where we're at right now. This is a solid machine. It's faster than 99% of all other results for 3 d Mark, and uh, this thing is gonna tear up some frame rates. So let's compare our previous score to what we can achieve with the new clocks. And as you can see, even the highest end components still have a little bit of room for fine tuning. Don't forget to check out our next episode where we put the cross test to the final test with games and monitors. For us at NVIDIA, that means a 3 plus 1 surround configuration with 4K G-Sync monitors. Thanks for watching GeForce Garage, the ultimate resource center for designing, building, and customizing your GeForce PC.